Cuban culture. And first I want to start with a little bit. Saturday night mode, the previous year. So we have a big home cook dinner tonight. Big, nice. Yeah, sure. Like I do every Saturday night. Yeah, but like, you know, something special. Like, like a real special occasion, something special. So nice. Balloons or something? No, I don't want balloons or something. I'm just saying something nice. When don't I make it nice? Make it sound nicer. Make it yourself. <laughs> the big communicator. So that's a clip from a, a movie called City Island. And that guy right there is Andy Garcia. I don't know if any of you guys know him. But he's a pretty famous Cuban actor. So start by saying both my parents are Cuban. Um, I grew up very close to my grandparents, which obviously grew up in Cuba, and were lucky enough to come to the United States before things in Cuba got really bad. So I have definitely been very close to the culture, grown up eating the food, speaking Spanish, or pretty much everything you can think of. And I've noticed most Americans don't know too much about the Cuban culture. So today I'm going to talk a little bit about the history. I'm going to tell you a little bit about Cuban-American life. And and I'll talk a little bit about the music and the food. Now, back then, Cuba used to be free, much like the United States is right now. It used to be a very big tourist location, going to the beaches, having a good time. Then Castro got in, and he formed his army in the 50s. Now, that was called the Socialist Revolution. He took over the government, made it communist as it is today. Then he went to the Soviet Union, looking for support, and then there's the whole Cold War and the Cuban Missile Crisis. Now, the U.S. attempted to overthrow the government of Cuba in 1961. Now, this was the Bay of Pigs invasion, which most of you have probably heard in your history classes or something. And unfortunately, it was unsuccessful. So ever since then, Cuba and the U.S. have been pretty hostile. Now, even though we don't get along, and there's an embargo on Cuba, meaning we can't send anything to them and they can't send anything to us. We still have a military base there, which is kind of weird. Now, if you think about it though, Cuba is very close to the United States. It is only 90 miles away from the southernmost point of the US, Key West. Now, there's a little picture on the left there. I've actually been there. That is Key West, the most southern point. You go and there's this big thing that says 90 miles to Cuba, southernmost point. And you just go, it's kind of a touristy spot. People like to take pictures there, see the ocean. Um, Cuba is surrounded by Haiti, the Dominican Republic, and Jamaica, and obviously Key West, Florida, right there. Um, so obviously, it's that close. So people get there. Um, since 1959, there's been three major migration waves. Now, the first were the people lucky to leave before the embargo, the blockade, on Cuban ports. So they got it easy. And from 1965 to 1973, Cuba and the U.S. both agreed to allow Cubans to come to see their families, to live with their families in the United States, which is how my grandparents got there. And then the third is probably one of the most famous ones, which some of you have probably heard of it, is the Maria and Folga, or as Cubans call it, Marielito which was a boat, similar to these, just a bunch of them, packed like that. Um, it was Castro basically opened the port to all Cubans who wanted to come be with their families. Now, with this, he also tried to get rid of the trash in Cuba. Basically, anybody that was a criminal or homosexual or anything like that, he tried to get them on here to send them to the United States. Now, this is what you see in the beginning of Scarface. And you guys probably seen that. I don't know. The very beginning when they're all coming, that's basically the clip they show. And this is actually how my uncle came to the United States. He had to pretend that he was gay so he could come to the United States. So we give him a hard time about that all the time. <laughs> <laughs> so what do Cubans do when we're here? Well, there's approximately 860,000 Cubans in the United States. 541,000 of which live in Florida, mainly Miami. Uh, there's also big populations in New York, New Jersey, and California. Now, I was actually surprised to see this, is the Cuban-American population is well-educated. 83% of them complete high school, 
and 17% complete college or college and some graduate school. Now, these are just some uh, percentages, comparisons that I found. So the 17, of the 17 percent of that complete college, there's 8% of Puerto Ricans do, 6% of Mexican Americans do, and 20% of the total U.S. population has completed college or college and some graduate school. So seeing the 17 percent was kind of interesting to me. I didn't think it was that high. Uh, there's also many entrepreneurs um, in the Cuban American culture, which would probably be because of the higher rate of education. Now, they work in almost every profession. Now, some famous ones you probably know is Bessie Arnaz, which you probably know from Ricky, from I Love Lucy. Uh, the next would be, from the video clip I showed you, Andy Garcia. He's been in several movies, including The Godfather 3. Then there's Jose Canseco, <laughs> which you probably know for giving steroids. <laughs> then there's Gloria Stefan, which is a very famous uh, Cuban singer songwriter. That's my mom's favorite. But. Then there's Daisy Fuentes, which is a very successful model and actress. Then there's the music. Now, music, Cuban music, you probably think salsa. Yeah, that's a big part of it. But it actually started uh, with the conga in the 1930s, which was made popular because of Desi Arnaz. Then after that came the mambo in 1945, which literally means conversation with the gods. Then after that was the cha-cha-cha. And then there's one song that every Cuban knows that you ask them and I guarantee you they will know. And the genre of the music is called Guajira. And the song is called Guantanamera. <laughs> Some of you probably know it's a very famous song. <laughs> Play it over there. So let's talk a little bit about food, my favorite part. So Cuban food, obviously, I'm biased, but it's my favorite. Um, it's becoming very trendy around the United States. You're starting to see little restaurants pop up. And it has influences from Spanish, French, African, Arab, and even some Chinese. Now, this up here is what we call ropa vieja, which literally translates to old clothes. It is, it is shredded beef cooked in what we call a sofrito, which is a sauce made of garlic, onions, tomato, olive oil. Most of the Cuban food is very garlicky. Um, most dishes are also be served with white rice, black beans, just a traditional thing to do. Then my favorite dish would be we call it pan panizado. It is a thin, thin garlic marinated, then breaded piece of steak. We pan fry that, and it would also be served with white rice, black beans. Then you have something very common, not just with the Cuban culture, but also a lot of Hispanic cultures do. Uh, Spain uses it a little bit, Dominicans, Puerto Ricans, all kind of do this. These are platanos, or plantains, which are very similar to bananas. They are up top. They're a little more starchy. Um, on the right, we have what we call platanos maduros, which would be when the plantains are more ripe, cut them up and deep fry them, get a sweeter taste. Or when they're less ripe, you would cut them, kind of do the same thing, mash them, and deep fry them, and you get kind of more of a french fry kind of taste to them. Um, some restaurants I would suggest to you guys, if you're interested in this, would be Portos and Versailles, but the one in Venice. If you guys are interested, those are definitely good places to go. So. Today I've talked to you guys a little bit about the history, told you a little bit about some famous Cubans and what we do here, and told you guys a little bit about the music and a little bit about the food. So hopefully you guys have come out of this learning a little bit more about the culture than most people know, and hopefully we'll one day try some good Cuban food.